Hey there, so today's tutorial is going to be the answer to a bit of a riddle. Namely, right now I have my poi turning in split time, same direction, and as you can see, they're close enough to each other that the poi could cross over if they wanted to. I could easily tangle if I wanted to, but I'm not. How am I avoiding this? Well, it all has to do with a concept that I like to call poi lanes. That is, when looking at you from the side, which of your poi is closest to your body, right? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys just a little bit of a bird's eye demonstration of what this happens to mean. Okay, so first things first. Now, when you stick your arms out in front of your body, kind of creating a little bowl, what you'll notice is that there's essentially two sides to where an object can be in relation to you here. It can be inside the bowl, or it can be outside the bowl, yeah? Um, and the way the poi moves is no different from this. You could think of these two sides of the bowl as almost being like two lanes of a highway, right? Now, it could be that the poi are rotating on the outside of the bowl for one hand, but the inside of the bowl for the other hand. Let me show you what I mean. So if I take this orange poi here, I can have it turning in a position where it is rotating outside of both arms. That is, closer to the audience than it would be to my body. However, a little uh, switch up here puts it on the inside of my left arm. And as you can see, it's inside the bowl as far as the left arm is concerned, but it's still outside of the bowl as far as the right arm is concerned, yeah? Likewise, I could put it on the inside of the right hand as well, in which case, it is rotating all the way through the bowl. But just to make things even more confusing, we can also set this up so that it's on the inside of the right hand's bowl and the outside of the left hand's bowl. That's a lot to think about, so for the purposes of making this easy on you guys, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to give you those positions where it's on the outside from the native arm, that is the arm that's attached to it, and the inside from the non-native arm. If you're interested in doing the inside of the native arm, we'll cover that in a later lesson where we start talking about inversions and the like, right? So, the way we're going to start drilling this actually is, I like doing this in split time, same direction we're going to place the two poi overlapping in such a way that they would hit each other if they were on the same side of the bowl for each hand, right? So, as you can see right here, my right side poi is on the inside of the bowl as far as the left arm is concerned. The left arm poi is on the outside of the bowl for both arms. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cross my arms and try and maintain that same relationship where the right-hand poi is still behind the left hand, but it's in front of the right hand, and the left-hand poi is in front of both, right? From here, I'm going to open it back up, and then switch to having my left hand on top. Oops. And as you can see, once again, my right arm poi is still behind my left hand, but in front of my right hand, and my left-hand poi is in front of both hands. Yes? If I unwrap, I can then reverse this same exercise by sticking my right arm further forward so that my right hand poi is now closer to the audience than it is to me, and my left hand poi is rotating in the right hand's bowl. Yes? Now, this is not the dominant way that I do it, so uh, I might have a little bit of issues working on this, but it's part of the learning process, right? So again, we want to try doing this with our arms crossed. And again, I'm keeping my left hand poi behind my right hand, but in front of my left hand. And my right hand poi is going in front of both. I can unwrap, and then I can put my left hand underneath my right hand. Again, making sure that my left hand poi stays behind my right hand. And then unwrap it, yeah? Now, you can put together a really quick and easy drill to start working on these, such that you can say, okay, right hand's behind, it's on top, it's behind, it's under, it's behind. Switch, left hand's behind, it's on top, it's behind, it's under. Back, and let's switch it. Right hand on top, right hand behind, right hand on bottom, right hand behind, switch it up, so on and so forth, right? Once you've got that to a place where it feels comfortable, the next place to take it is actually in together opposites, which is the other timing and direction that you'll find where the poi might cross across each other's paths when they're on the sides, right? And again, I start with my right hand further back, and I cross over so that my right hand is on top, and my right hand poi is behind my left hand. 
Then I uncross, and then right hand goes under. And uncross, bring my left arm further back, and left hand is on top, uncross, left hand is on bottom, uncross, right? Really, you want to work through all timing and direction combinations for this, but the ones that you're going to have to use most often are the ones that are in together opposite and split time same direction. Great, so now that you've done the exercise and you know how to get your poi planes where you want them to go, the next question, of course, is why is something like this important? And the answer is when you start playing around with things like split time same direction flowers, in a wall plane like this, you'll note the points that I reach on either side where my arms are crossed over, my hands are close enough together that they're inside of a single poi length. By drilling the ability to keep my poi rotating, even though they're crossed and even though they're both in wall plane, it enables me to find my way out of this move in both directions. The more solid this feels, the easier it's going to be to do the parts that feel the hardest of it, namely on either side of it, right? Likewise, when you're playing around with together opposite flowers, there inevitably is a place where your arms have to cross over in order to complete that motion. This is how you're able to work inside of that space, by training your ability to keep those poi lanes clear, right? Additionally, if you're working in a place where, say, you've got one poi playing closer to your body than the other one, say one inside the bowl and one outside of the bowl, when you start working in hybrids, specifically monorhythm hybrids like this, which is a four pedal anti-spin versus two pedal in-spin, there will have to be a point on either side of your body where one poi is closer to your body than the other one. In this case, the blue poi is closer to the camera and the red poi is actually between my arms. It's inside the bowl, right? Absolutely any time you're working around in uh, split opposites like this, you're inevitably going to have one of your poi and one of your hands in that inside lane position. And performing that drill is a great way to go about becoming more and more comfortable with it, right? So it's, it's one of those things that's comparatively minor at this point, but the more you drill it, the more you're likely to feel comfortable with the moves that can be derived from it, yeah? So, uh, I hope this is helpful to some of you guys, and uh, have yourselves a good week. I'll be back with another tutorial for you next week. Peace.